Welcome back. Today we are getting into part two of the Lizzie Bennet dress, making the mock-up for once in my entire life. I'm making a mock-up. Anyways, taking an old bed sheet that has a lot of polyester in it. Ooh. Ooh, she melty. Ooh. And turning that into the mock-up for the Lizzie Bennet dress. I'm cobbling together two patterns. One's an American Duchess pattern, one's just a random pattern. I found at a thrift store that has the sort of v-neck that we're looking for. I did have to give my mannequin a boob reduction to make this work because she is a bit chestier than me. And for once, I am actually doing a little bit of pattern drafting. So as I want to stab myself with a lot of pins, I decided it's better to try this drafting on Moira clothes, the mannequin. Thank you, Moira. Appreciate your service. I'm sorry that you look um, a bit crunchier than before. Let's go ahead and get into the making of the Lizzie Bennett dress. <coughs> If I'm being entirely frank, I have a lot of theories about the Lizzie dress, especially the front closure. Symmetrical buttons going on, so my theory is that the buttons lead down to a placket on the side, so there's a flat panel in front that goes to where the waistband is, there's a button on the waistband for the front closure, all of the pleating gathering is happening in the back, so we're gonna make a sort of diagonal front placket doodad. And I have some video evidence of this that we're gonna go over right now. So in this scene, you can see some pretty good shots of the gathering at the back of the dress. Initially, I thought they were pleats, but after some tests, I do believe it's gathers. From this shot, you're able to see that there's quite a bit of fullness and length to the skirt. I wasn't quite able to achieve this just because I didn't have enough fabric, but it has a really nice A-line bell shape to it. You can also very clearly see the diagonal nature of the buttons. In this close-up shot, you can see the bulkiness of the placket area. And then in these shots, you can really see the asymmetricalness of the waist. It's a lot higher in front than in back, in part because the weight of the pleats in the back are dragging it down. So you can also see that the neck is cut a little deeper and that there isn't a center back seam in that piece. And you can really see the gathers in the back of Lizzie's dress. Of course, in order to make my pattern, I had to address my dress form because, as I mentioned earlier, she's a bit chestier than I am. They're too big. This required tearing, then cutting off the fabric on the front of the dress form. Then I took a hot foil-covered iron to her boobs and just kind of melted them until they were the right circumference. I am in no way endorsing this form of dress form modification because it was probably hazardous to my health, but it worked! Moira has officially joined the Itty Bitty Titty Committee with me and Kira. To avoid starting entirely from scratch, I cobbled together two patterns. I started with the center back and side back pieces from the 8161 Simplicity American Duchess pattern you've seen me use before in videos. And I used a thrifted pattern for a 90s style dress that has a V-shaped neckline for the front. But I modified it significantly, so when I cut it out, I left a ton of extra room along the neckline and extending out in front. I then sewed the pieces together and put them on my dress form, and I started taking it in until it fit me pretty well. I taped on Moira approximately where I wanted the arm openings to go, traced that in Taylor's chalk, and then cut away the excess, leaving a little bit of wiggle room for seam allowance, which may or may not have been a good idea. The fit was pretty good when I tried it on, but it did need a bit more tailoring. I want to apologize for going full grim in the mode and dressing like that tall burglar from Home Alone in the majority of this video. Sometimes winter hits you like a freight train. Here's the mock-up of the front closure. A lot of the Lizzie dresses have side closures that they get in and out of. They're either up here or here. And so I'm doing the waistband that will button over here in addition to the buttons here along the center front. So the final concept being that you open the side closure, the skirt is attached but there's enough room to get in and out. There's a little bit of an extra panel here. You can undo these buttons, undo the side button, and this whole placket opens for entry and exit. I tried to mock up the skirt a little bit. I've got a piece that's about the length that I think the skirt panels I have will be. So I've just got to do it based on what's left over after. After I do the bodice, um, so it will be approximately the width of a bed sheet that's been cut to make a dress. Not to get too Macara tours on you or anything. It'll be 50 Kit Kats long. I've got to get this flat panel to sit here and then have kind of even pleats on either side. It's all twisted way too far this way right now. Um, but I'm tired, so I'm giving up for the night. I'm not as tired as this little nugget. 
I got to work planning the skirt. I thought it was pleated, so I spent a morning pleating everything down, and then tried it on and realized that it didn't quite look right. And after doing the pirate shirt, I realized it was more likely to be gathers than pleats. Since this English major is loath to do math for any reason, instead of calculating the pleats, I decided to try using a fork to pleat instead. It worked! But I had to stick a fork in my pleat plans because they were way too big and it wasn't going to be the way to go. It left me with a burning question. How they pleat? <laughs> yeah, so this is all wrong. But it was a good test. I have a brilliant idea. Yeah. While you do your repinning, we should watch Pride and Prejudice. <gasps> we should watch Pride and Prejudice. Yay! I'm very excited. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. For research. Perfect. Six inches deep in mud. Yeah, positively medieval. medieval. To better visualize the final waistband, I made some one inch wide bias tape with this fun little contraption. I've been putting off work on the Lizzie dress. It's gotten to the point where I have to actually make some cuts on this bodice. And I'm just kind of getting nervous about actually cutting into the real fabric. So I'm working on the Lizzie Bennet dress and I need to get this slight angle of the closure over here. It sort of leans to the left and then the left closure's over here. So I need to cut the bodice at this slight angle. Looks like there's maybe some seams under the bust. I'm not seeing them in this picture, but I saw it in the film. So it seems like there's maybe a bit there. I guess let's get a cutting. Excuse me, I need to try that on and you're attacking it. I mean, this is like barely held together with pins. Probably gonna stab myself a ton. Ah, pins. Don't, Don't judge me. me. Don't, Don't you dare, dare judge, judge me. me. That's pretty good. I mean, it's definitely not perfect. The back's pretty good. This is at too much of an angle. This needs to come over more. And I need more volume under here. That's pretty good though. This is the placket that I put in. It's sewed along here and here, and it goes like this so that when this opens, it's got a little bit there, and that's wide enough for me to get my hips through. This will button at the side. These will get tucked under a tiny bit. Seam allowance might be too intense of a diagonal. There's just a lot wrong with this still. There should be pleat city central. Well, okay, we're getting there. I went back and refined the plan a little bit. <laughs> and Julian was wild about it. Oh no! No! No, not in the dress! That out of the way? What you doing? This is the placket. Nine inch front panel goes from here to here. Front seams here. Everything is gathered into the waistband from here around. We have the placket. I'll fold it back and stitch it to the seam allowance and that should be good. This is the angle for the bodice, so I'm just gonna trace that on here with Taylor's chalk. I realized a lot of my fit problems were because my waistband wasn't long enough since I had just cut it to an arbitrary measurement. So I made it a bit longer and that solved the problems. And my plan was to take my bias tape and stitch the top half to the bodice, the bottom half to the skirt. With the top and skirt stitched to the bias tape, I planned to whip the inside lining to the bottom edge of the bias tape on the inside for extra support. So this is the top, this is the waistband. It will come over and button on the left side. I probably need to make this less long because it's supposed to button about here. Maybe that's okay, but I need this bit to overlap. So this probably needs to come to here. It's working, looks, looks pretty good. After that bodice fitting, I realized that I still needed to cut out a deep scoop in the back of the neckline. I think we're finally ready to make a pattern from this mock-up. At this stage, I had run two gather stitches in the back of the dress in lieu of pleats, and I think it works so much better. I was really awkward modeling for whatever reason. The dress looked as close as it was gonna get to the real thing, and all that was left was to cut it out of my fashion fabric. Naturally, I was gripped by an intense panic that I had to dance away. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, go ahead and give this video a like and subscribe because there's gonna be more excitement in the new year. And Jill Bean and I would absolutely appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching. And in the meantime, keep making.